Welcome, I'm the dentist. In our dent agenda, we will be continuing the first chapter, History Taking and Examination, Part 3. These are the points included in this chapter video series. And here is the detailed content. We will be starting investigation in this video. Investigation To differentiate between the last video about examination and this and the next videos, investigation, you need to understand that to examine it means to observe or inspect carefully to gain information. Unlike investigation, where you inquire information or studies or doing tests yourself to a certain facts or to get certain information. Before we start, you need to know that investigation has two main parts. The first one that will be discussed in this tutorial is the general investigation. The second part is the dental investigation that is only related to the dental diagnosis and this will be discussed in the next tutorial. Starting with general investigation, we will be going through temperature, blood pressure, pulse, respiratory rate, laboratory tests and blood glucose levels. Starting with the temperature. Temperature can be measured in two different methods, using contact or non-contact thermometers. Contact thermometers, like oral thermometer, it is suitable as long as the person is old enough to be able to hold it inside the mouth, and also as long as the person is not a mouth breather, since it requires the person to close the mouth for about one minute. Axial thermometers placed in the armpits, and the measurement is usually about half a degree lower than the temperature measured orally. Rectal thermometers. They are placed in the rectal opening and usually used with infants, and also the measurement is different than the oral temperature. It is about half a degree higher. Forehead strips. The forehead strips using a liquid crystal thermometers. They contain a heat sensitive or thermochromic liquid crystals in a plastic strip. These crystals change color to indicate different temperatures. It's an old method that is not usually used anymore nowadays. Non-contact thermometers like crest and temporal scanners. The idea behind these is an infrared scanner that measures the temperature of the air moving over the surface of the skin resulted from the movement of the blood in either the radial artery or the temporal artery. Lastly, Tympanic thermometers. Tympanic thermometers are placed inside the ear. They measure, they contain otoscope like probes. They are inserted into the external auditory canal and measure the thermal infrared energy embedded from the tympanic membranes. If there is any wax plugs or if the external ear canal is curved and small, it might interfere with the accuracy of the measurement. Here's a table with all the temperatures in Celsius and Fahrenheit, measured by different methods and throughout different ages. If you focus on the oral temperature, you can find that it varies throughout different ages. And also, if you compare a single 
group of eight, you will find the differences, small differences between the measurements using different methods. Cardiopulmonary system. Firstly, we measure the pulse. The adult pulsation ranges from 60 to 80 beats per minute and it is usually a lot higher in kids and infants. To measure that, you place three fingers over the radial artery of the patient and count the pulse and at the same time recognize its characters. Blood pressure. Normal adult blood pressure is about 120 systolic over 80 diastolic millimeters of mercury. A falling blood pressure may indicate a faint, hypovolemia or other form of shock. High blood pressure indicates a very high risk of the patient going under general anesthesia due to the bleeding that could be uncontrolled. Pulse and blood pressure affected by gender, age, body weight and if the person is an athlete or not. Respiratory rate. Normal rate of breaths is about 12 to 18 breaths or breath cycles per minute. A cycle composed of a full inhalation and a full exhalation. In case of chest infections, pulmonary edema, shock, and anxiety or panic attacks or other form of attacks, the patient might suffer from tachypnea, which is a rapid shallow respiratory rate. lab tests. Before we dive into that, you need to know that almost all laboratory tests come in the report with the normal ranges and the upper and lower limits of the test. But no matter what, never perform or request an investigation that you cannot interpret. Starting with the urine analysis, it is important for measuring the levels of glucose for diabetes diagnosis, for protein levels to investigate the kidney health and function, as a blood screening to see if there is a presence of any infection or tumors, to measure the levels of bilirubin for diagnosis of hepatocellular or obstructive jaundice and the levels of uropelanogen to diagnose jaundice of any type. Then by urea and electrolytes. Here is the urea normal range. A rising urea suggests dehydration, renal failure or blood in the gut. Creatinine normal level varies between males and females, and it rises in case of renal failure. Full blood count or complete blood count as it is called CBC. Firstly, the hemoglobin. It is the protein that holds oxygen in the RBCs. And here is the normal range varies between males and females. Hematocrit. It means how much of your blood is made up of red blood cells. A low score may be a sign that you do not have enough iron and a high score could mean that you are dehydrated or have another condition. Mean corpuscular volume. Here is the normal range in femtoliters. It is the average volume of the red cells in a specimen. The mean corpuscular volume is affected 
means elevated or decreased, according to the average red blood cell or corpuscle size. A low MCV indicates microcytic, which means a small average RBC size. And this can be in a case of any kind of anemia or iron deficiency. A normal MCV indicates normocytic, which is a normal average RBC size. A high MCV indicates macrocytic, which is a large average RBC size. And this can happen in case of vitamin B12 and folate deficiency. Continuing with the complete blood count, RBCs, red blood corpuscles. We call it corpuscle, not cell, because it lacks nucleus. Its function is to, is to hold oxygen and carbon dioxide. Here is the normal numbers of cells measured in cells per microliters, varying between males and females. White blood cells. They are related to immunity. They increased in cases of inflammation, infection, or other health problems, and they can be decreased. And in that case, it puts the person at a higher risk of infection. And here is the normal number of cells in microliters. Platelets. They help your blood to clot in case of injury. And here is the number of platelets in a normal person per microliters. Clotting time. It's of major importance, especially if the patient is going under any form of dental surgeries. Measured by prothrombin and partial thromboplastine time. They are different because they measure the integrity of different clotting factors in our body and also one is for the intrinsic and other for the extrinsic, extrinsic system which we're not going to into details right now. Prothrombin time ranges from 10 to 15 seconds. A prolonged PT indicates deficiency in some certain clotting factors like and also decreased in prothrombin, fibrinogen, vitamin K, or can indicate a liver disease. Partial thromboplastine time, or PTT, ranges from 30 to 45 seconds, and it can be used to diagnose patients taking anticoagulants like heparin and others. Bleeding and clotting times can be measured on spot without a lab test. Moving to blood glucose levels. We will be going through four different tests and their results to diagnose diabetes. The first one is glycated hemoglobin test or A1C test. It measures the average blood sugar level over the past two or three months and that is why it is the most accurate. If it is lower than 5.7% the person considered normal. If it's higher than 57 but less than 6.4% the patient is in the pre-diabetic stage and if it equal to or higher than 6.5% the patient considered diabetic. The second test is the fasting blood sugar test. It measures the blood sugar after an overnight fast. If it's equal to or less than 99 milligrams per deciliter the person's sugar level considered normal. If it's higher than 100 and less than 125 milligrams per deciliter, the person is in the pre-diabetic stage. If it's equal to or higher 126 milligrams per deciliter, the patient is considered diabetic. 
The third test is glucose tolerance test. It measures the blood sugar before and after drinking a liquid that contains glucose. It means that the person goes through an overnight fast and then take the first sample. Then drink a liquid containing glucose and measure or check the blood sugar level every one, two and sometimes three hours afterwards. A level after two hours of drinking the glucose liquid, if the sugar level is less than or equal to 140 mg per deciliter, it is considered normal. If it is higher than 140 to 199 mg per deciliter, the person is in the pre-diabetic stage. And if it's 200 mg per deciliter or higher, the person is considered diabetic. The fourth and last test is the random blood glucose or sugar level. It measures the blood sugar at any time, specifically at the time you are tested. You can take this test at any time and don't need to fast before it. A blood sugar level higher than 200 mg per deciliter or equal to 100 indicates you are diabetic. Here's a table of all the four tests explained with the normal pre-diabetic and diabetic values. Thank you.